Remember when the Premier League didn't have VAR? The 2019-2020 Premier League season was the first time this feature was introduced into the league, without which life was so much easier, less stressful and quite frankly, guess what, more enjoyable in the circles of football. One of the most divisive introductions to football, the technology has split the football fan base far and wide and it doesn't look like winning anyone over anytime soon. Welcome to VAR Daily where we make sure we get you all your daily dose of everything football and in this episode we'll be taking a look at the three top most controversial decisions made by VAR so far in the EPL season. We are only four game weeks into the new EPL season and VAR has been more controversial than ever. Much of the controversy at this early stage of the 2023-2024 campaign has surrounded the video assistant referee VAR. This technology, remember, was brought in as a means of making life easier on the field for officials. The complication of rules and apparent incompetence by those in charge of the technology means it simply hasn't brought about the greater precision many had expected and desired. However, VAR perhaps hasn't been such a major factor in determining match outcomes at the start of the new season as you might have expected. Even after a few years of working on it and refining some of the edges, the use of VAR still happens to cause much controversy and even with the Premier League only being 4 games, just 4 games in, there have been a number of incidents that have left fans, players and managers alike scratching their heads and wondering what on earth exactly is going on. It is fascinating to hear the process behind a VAR check. One, which football fans and football administrators and teams alike have been eager to hear. The broadcasting of decisions, their process and explanation will be an ongoing feature throughout the season. However, only time will tell if the new program which has been stipulated and has Howard Webb as a guest will further enrage fans or calm them. By highlighting so many errors as well as correct decisions, it may question the capability of officials and could create more arguments rather than resolve them. The transparency of the professional game match officials limited which is the pgmol review show at least tells fans how many decisions were reached but does not come close to ending the debate which has been raging over var if anything it highlights obvious errors are still being made by match officials and that refers to those both on the pitch which we see when watching football and those in stockley park where var is controlled for the apl now let's take a look at at the three top most incidents in no particular order. Let's start off at the home ground of Arsenal, the Emirates, where in a crunch game with rivals Manchester United, the game was all leveled at 1 0. When Kai Havertz drove into the box and got sandwiched by Aaron Wambisaka and Casimero, Havertz, having the mind of an offensive player, hit the deck, claiming he was fouled, but referee of the day, Anthony Taylor, gave the penalty. However, VAR official on duty, Herald Gillett, checked the decision and recommended an on-field review. He could be heard in an audio which has been released claiming contact had been initiated by the Arsenal forward. As Taylor jogged to the screen on the side of the pitch, he asked his VAR team to tell him exactly what he was about to see. Taylor decided to overturn his original decision. Arsenal supporters as well as Mikel Ateta were caught in shock. But officials followed the correct protocols and Anthony Taylor was brave enough to correct this mistake. In the second instance, it was all level at 1-1 when Nathan Ake of Manchester City headed his team in front from a corner kick just before halftime. Fulham were incensed even before replay showed City's Manuel Kanji was both in an offside position and also blocking keeper Brett Leno's view. Referee Michael Oliver waved away the penalty please and awaited a review from the VAR team in Stockley Park. At least so far from audios released, you could hear the debate which was centered around whether Akanji clearly in an offside side position was also in the way of Leno. The VAR team came to the conclusion that the city centre back's positioning did not hamper the view of Leno. The goal was given and City took the lead going into the break. This did not stand well with the folks at Fulham as they went on to lose this game by five goals to one and felt hard done by. Howard Webb has described this incident as a clear mistake, stating the goal should not have stood. Marco Silva's team would have been level at halftime and who knows, the game may just have taken a different turn. 
Final incident we will be looking at is one that caused so much controversy on the opening day. But before then, some honorable mentions, specifically that of the Liverpool captain, Virgil van Dijk, who was judged to have gone through the player Isaac to reach the ball and given his marching orders at St. James's Park. Obviously, looking at replays, he went through the player and this is not even up for debate. I don't even get why this particular one is considered as any way shape or form a controversy as it was clear as daylight that Virgil van Dijk went through the player in this case Isaac to get to the ball and that is a foul in addition to that he also said some words which did not sit well with the referee and has been given an extended match ban now to the most controversial so far of all decisions that have been taken into consideration by VAR. It happened on the opening weekend, last game of match day one, when Wolverhampton Wanderers went all the way to Old Trafford and left empty-handed after losing 1-0 to Manchester United. Arguably, Wolves were the better team throughout the game, having numerous chances back were undone by a Rafael Varane header. As the game went deep into extra time, Wolves decided to wash the kitchen bowls and throw the kitchen sink at United. The ball was swung into the United box and Craig Dawson won the header. However, his teammate Sasa Kalasic was cluttered by goalkeeper Andre Onana. Wolverhampton players and staff appealed for a penalty as they and many thought it was a clear foul. However, referee on the day, Simon Hooper waved it away initially but the VAR team checked for a possible penalty. After a few moments of conferring, the decision of no penalty was made to the surprise of many. And now, as heard in the released audio of the communication that went on between Simon Hooper and those up in Stockley Park, Dawson winning the header was a factor in the decision. If Kalasic had been the player to head the ball and then hit by Onana, the penalty would have been given. As the two players were going for the ball but made no contact, it is deemed a natural collision. However, this incident was highlighted by how would work again as a huge mistake. He explained that Hooper should have been advised to go to the monitor and see the incident for himself, where a penalty would surely have been given. Quite rightly, Wolves can still feel aggrieved. A huge talking point and not an ideal way to start the season for VAR. VAR will certainly not achieve 100% accuracy, but will positively influence decision making and lead to more correct and fairer judgments. We can only hope. This has been VAR Daily and until next time, remember to hit the subscribe button, like the video and share as this is just the beginning. Cheers.